Last time we were talking about, and just to pick up, give you a bit of a reminder where we were, uh, we were down to verse number 25. The Bible says, Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. And so we talked about uh, a real brother in Christ is five things to a real minister of the gospel. He is a brother, he is a companion, a fellow soldier, and a messenger. And the last thing we got to uh, and we didn't get to finish was how he is a minister. He's also a minister. And uh, let's look over at Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. And verse number 2. And if you're going to be a, um, uh, a, a blessing to the minister and to your brothers and sisters in Christ, you have to learn to be a minister. Uh, a lady can do that. A child can do that. Um, an adult uh, can do that. Anybody can do that. Um, somebody tell me the first um, four letters of that word. What does that say? Many. many. Right. Many. Uh, what does many mean? Small, minute, un momento, por favor, minuto, right? And that M I N M I N I, that's many, that's small. And you know what a lot of people think and what they bought into the world's lies is to be a minister, you have to do something great, something big. That's not true. It's something small. And uh, the small things add up. And, and you know, the, if you do the small things, the small things, if they get done, they add up to big things. Um, you know, you don't get hours without minutes. You don't get, uh, it turns from minutes to hours, and hours turn into days and weeks and months and years of serving the Lord. And um, if, you ever, if you're ever um, interested, take some time and study uh, how they break your life down. Anybody ever read those statistics? It's terrifying sometimes when you read those statistics. But the Bible says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And uh, like, I, I forget the numbers. I don't have them right in front of me, but I've got them wrote down somewhere. It's like you spend like, uh, if you live this many years, like 80 years, you spend 19 years sleeping or something like that. It's just like... You know, you think you actually live that long, but you're sleeping this this much and you spend this much time getting to and from work, this much time doing this, this much time doing that. And uh, it's really shocking when you see some of those numbers, but they add up is what I'm getting at. And to be in the ministry and to be a minister, it's the small things. It's small things that add up. The Bible said about Joshua that he was Moses minister. And you know what? One of the things that said he and uh, that he did, he just ministered. He, he, he just looked after Moses, just followed Moses around. Moses needed something. He went and got it. The Bible said that uh, Elias was a minister to Elijah. And you see what he did. He said, just poured water over the hands of the prophet. Boy, that's, that's not a very big thing, is it? Not a very big thing. You know what Jesus Christ said? Jesus Christ said, if you'll give a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus Christ, you'll not lose your reward. Something as small as a cup of water. <laughs> Amen. And, and you can minister uh, to someone. And, and uh, the Bible says here that if you're going to be used by God, and I've, I've said this many times and I've seen it before. Uh, in, if you're, if, listen, you may have grand ideals that you want to be a minister, that you want to be used by God. God never called a lazy, uh, a lazy no good for nothing Christian. If you're sitting idly by and not doing nothing, you know what he said to that one? He said, don't put your hand to the plow and look back. You're not worthy of me. Make sure you're doing something. You know, one of the last things Jesus said to uh, those ones that's listening to me, he said, occupy till I come. You have no excuse, Christian. I have no excuse for sitting idly by. Now, I know that there's a balance to the Christian life and to life in general. Jesus Christ preached that balance that you need to come apart for a while and rest. There's a time for leisure. Jesus Christ was the one that instituted that and talked about leisure. God on the seventh day rested and said that you need to rest. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. But unfortunately, there's a difference between resting and laziness. And, and where we get sometimes to where, where we're not um, being busy for the Lord and doing things. And, it, and we think because we can't do something big that that 
detracts and takes away, so we don't even do anything small. And, and it's the devil's deception. The devil wants to deceive you into thinking that because we know, we know that we're nothing, right? And we're nobody. You know what the Apostle Paul said? He said, I am least of all saints. I am chief of sinners. But nowhere do you find Paul using that as an excuse why he didn't serve the Lord. Amen? He still ministered for the Lord and found something to do. Amen? I thank God that some of you took it upon yourselves. We sent the message out. And you get these opportunities from time to time. Sister Rosemary was in need. Brother Ken was in need. Somebody to look after him. And you say, what can you do? Just cook a meal and look after him. A chance to minister. Something as small as preparing a meal. And boy, you talking about a blessing to Brother Ken and Sister Rosemary. What a blessing that that has been. Just something simple, but you can do that for the Lord. No, but you're looking for great things, aren't you? But the Bible says to be a minister is to do something small. Ministry is something small. And it's to be busy for the Lord. Look what the Bible said. The Apostle Paul wasn't always the Apostle Paul. Wasn't always there. You say, what was he doing? Bef you know, even before the Apostle Paul was saved, he was busy uh, in what he thought was the Lord's work. Now, he was wrong. He was wrong. And that didn't stop him when he got on the other side of salvation. He kept going to serve the Lord. Amen. And uh, the Bible says there in verse 2, Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, as they what? Ministered. Who? The Bible says to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So God called them while they were busy serving the Lord. You know when the Lord called me? To, to, to preach and when he called me to go to Bible school and when he called me to come to Australia he had to come and get me out of the field because I was working each time God called me while I was busy trying to do something for him amen and and God's led me to this point and he'll call you when you're busy the Bible says there and they as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost looked down and said separate me those two they're working in the field I want to put them to work not only in the local church but in the regions beyond amen you want to be used by God you better stay occupying in his business amen and the Bible says that if you're going to be uh, one of these things you need to be a minister look at Romans chapter 15 and verse 27 Acts in the book of Romans next, chapter 15 and verse 27. Romans chapter 15 and verse 27. Romans chapter 15 and verse 27. The Bible says there, It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is to what? Minister unto them in what? Carnal things. So, so the Bible says there to minister uh, sometimes going to cost you something. You know that? Minister unto them in carnal things. You know, we support missionaries around here. We send money so that the, they can buy gospel tracts and pay their bills on the foreign field or to get churches going and, and to support those works. We send out those funds. And they minister about spiritual things and we minister unto them carnal things. You see, not everybody's called to go to the mission field. God didn't call the whole church in the book of Acts to go out to the mission field. He said, separate me, Paul, Saul, and Barnabas. So I say this often, and I'll say it again. Some are called to go, and some are called to stay. Everybody can't go. But you say, what can you do? As they go, God's given you, the Bible says, let him, give, him that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. You can give to the work of God so the gospel can go out, so gospel tracts can be bought, souls can be saved, and Jesus Christ can be magnified and glorified. Amen? And what a, what a joy to enter into that and to be part of that ministry. And you have, to, you have to think of that in that way. But you say, what is it? Just simple as putting a little bit of money in the plate, a little bit of money in the bag, or uh, to, give, to, to donate to that, the, the, the work of missions. And what a privilege it is to do that. Amen? To be involved in that. 
Amen. And so that concludes basically what the um, the five things are there about um, if to be a true minister to a uh, five things uh, a real brother in Christ is to a, the minister of the gospel. And so, you know, you get to help Brother Rodney and Brother Danny and Brother Dave. Those men were called and sent out of our church. And they, they depend upon you. Amen. And you say, what can we do? You're their fellow soldier and minister. Amen. And any, anything, any fruit that they get, the Bible says uh, there was a statute and set up in Israel. And, and really, King David followed the Lord's leadership on this. That those that tarry by the stuff and those that go out, they shall part alike. You give to the work of God, you've got, uh, you've got joint um, uh, inheritance with Brother Dave Coots and the souls that he goes and leads to Christ in the Philippines. You've got a joint inheritance with Brother Danny and the Huey's family up in Gold Coast, Queensland. You've got a joint endeavor with Brother Rodney and the souls saved down in, in Oladulla. Uh, just recently they had their baptismal service. They had two actually. And six souls followed the Lord in believer's baptism after they got saved. And that's fruit that may abound to your account. Amen. And you ministered to him and ministered to the church so that they can do those things that are pleasing to the Lord, fulfill their calling. Amen. Praise be to God for that. Now the Bible goes on here and says, um, uh, in back to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We'll go back there. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> and verse number 26. For he, that's Epaphroditus, longed after you all. Longed after the Philippians. Longed after you all. In verse 26, and was full of heaviness. Because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. And so um, the Bible says there that he, that he, because he had heard, uh, because ye had heard that he had been sick. You say, what bothered Epaphroditus? He was on such a level in his Christianity and serving the Lord that he wasn't worried. And the Bible tells you in another ref cross reference that he was nigh unto death and he wasn't even concerned about his own health. His main concern was the saints in Philippi. And so much so that they had, he was concerned about how concerned they were about him. And he didn't want them to be concerned about him. How about that? That's, a, that's, that's um, what you call some high ground in Christianity. That's on a different level. Amen. That's, uh, that's uh, like the Bible says, turn over to 1 Corinthians, hold your place in Philippians. Um, we'll be back there. But look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 29. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm homeward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. 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 Isn't that what we're supposed to desire and want as Christians to where we lose more of ourselves and gain more of Christ? Amen. Epaphroditus got it. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 29. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 29. Conscience, I say, not thine, what? Own, but of the, what? Other. He was conscience of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? And you say, what does, he do? what does it say there? I say, not thine own, but of the other. His conscience, he was conscious and thinking about his brother. Uh, and sisters in Christ. And so much so that, um, that he put himself down and was nigh to death for the work. Um, and in his sickness, he kept on going. And you know what that shows me too, back in Philippians 2? You know what that shows me as well? That even though you're sick, you can serve Jesus Christ. The Bible says there, he, he says that in verse 26, He longed after you and was full of heaviness because that ye heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. And not just, you know, oh, I got a headache. He was nigh unto death. Close to death. And you say, what was he doing? Still serving Jesus Christ. 
God help us to have, all of us to have that resolve that we don't get a free pass that, okay, I've got a toothache in my heel and I'm, you know, I don't, don't feel good here and I don't feel good there and, and this is going on, that's going on. We take any excuse, the wind's blowing the wrong way and I'm hair-lipped and I'm, I've got this, this headache and my hair's just not laying just right. Whatever excuse we say, and we don't want to serve the Lord. Amen? All flesh is grass, the Bible says. If I got that problem, you do too. And you know what you have to do? You have to say, even in my sickness, I got a backache, I got a toothache, I got a, um, an earache, whatever the case may be. You need to find a way in your sickness to still serve Jesus Christ. Amen? Um, I, I read and, and, and heard the story and, and I read it that an, old la an older lady said, I want to serve the Lord. And she said, I don't have a car. She didn't have a driver's license and got to the place where she couldn't hardly leave her easy chair, her armchair there. Had the, had the mobile, not mobile, but had the phone sitting there next to her. And, um, and, and she got creative and she said, I want to witness for Christ. I want to do something for the Lord. And so every time she would sign up for everything she got a chance for, where they would send her all of this uh, junk mail. And then the junk mail, they send a free return address envelope. And we have a few of those in Australia and, uh, where, where they do that. And so she would take a gospel track, and it was, didn't cost her anything, and she would stuff those envelopes with the gospel and send it back to them free of charge in their own dime. And uh, amen, get creative. And she would also, she got out the phone book, you know, the, of the, her local phone book, and she started calling people in the phone book. Don't telemarketers do that for a living and get paid $25, $35, $40 an hour for doing that? And she started going down the list, call them up and say, my name's Mrs. So-and-so and I live over here and I'd like to see if there's anybody in the house that would like to hear about Jesus Christ and how they can go to heaven when they die. And most people would say, oh, blankety blank, or I don't want to talk to you and hang up. But there would be one and once in a while and says, oh, I would like to talk about that. I've been thinking about the Lord. Amen. You can do something for Jesus Christ. In your infirmity, you can serve Jesus Christ. And Epaphroditus didn't let that keep him down to where he said, okay, I'm throwing in the towel. Some people have been dying for 20 years. Yeah. My dad used to joke with me and say that and said, said, oh, they're really sick. And he said, son, don't worry about them. They've been dying for 20 years. <laughs> they should have been dead 20 years ago to hear them tell it. Meaning they're not as in bad a shape as they make out that they are. <laughs> Amen. Brother Sam Gipp wrote a book called Living with Pain. And Sam Gipp has wrote more books and served the Lord harder and faster than just about anybody you know. And he served the Lord. And you say, what happened to him? When he was a young man, he was on the job site working in construction and fell down head first in elevator shaft and broke his spine. And he didn't know it. He got up. He's so tough. He got up and kept on going. Didn't go to the doctor. Didn't get an x-ray. And went and put on the helmet to play gridiron football. And got out there smashing together and playing gridiron. And he almost, um, he got very sick and got down out there on the field. Then he went to the doctor in hospital and got x-ray. Said, I don't know how you're walking in the door. I don't know how you're alive. You've got a broken neck. And he'd already, the damage was already done. And now he has to live with that pain the rest of his life. And he wrote that book on how to live with pain. While um, reports I've heard that he reads upwards of, a uh, hundred pages and sometimes more of his Bible per day while serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can still serve the Lord in... You say, why? Because there's coming a time, brethren, if the Lord tarries, you're going to get a little bit older and a little bit more feeble and a little bit slower. And you say, what? Sickness is coming for all of us. And you better find ways to get creative and serve the Lord so that you can use your three score and ten to, to God's glory all the way till you're nigh unto death. This man was nigh unto death of Papaditis and he was still witnessing and still sending and still working saying, I'm serving the Lord till he calls me home. Amen. What a good attitude. Make up your mind right now. You're going to serve Jesus Christ till God calls you home. I thank God one of the last, last times talking to Brother George and, and uh, he said, what, he's in the hospital. He's witnessing in the hospital. He's witnessing, talking to people about their soul. God called him home, but he got some witnessing in as he went. Amen? 
And whether in life or in death, do all to the glory of God. Amen. God help us. Epaphroditus here in the text is not worried about being sick as much as he is afraid that some other Christian will get down and worry about him if they hear about it. And that's a different level. He has so, so died to self so much that he considers the brethren before himself. And really picks up the verse there in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Turn there. The Bible says uh, there in Philippians 2, 3, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem what? Other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also in the things of... What is it again? Others. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which, also wa which was also in Christ Jesus. Epaphroditus favored in his walk with the Lord. He favored the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's the mind that was in him. And the Bible says there, let this mind also, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. You know what that's telling me? The Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God, when He took up residence within you, He's trying to, let, to make that happen. At every turn, God is trying to get you to think about and let each esteem others better than themselves. Amen? And... Um, I'm, I'm careful. I want to say something here, and I want you to take it. I want you to take it balanced. Okay, I have seen this, and I've tried to live this, and 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 I'm not patting myself on the back, but I can tell you this as a fair warning: there are if, there are in this world users. Okay, and you have to have some wisdom to know. When you are being used and abused. And you can only, with God's wisdom, determine how far to take that to where you realize that this person that's doing the abusing and the using, you have to put a stop to it. Because there are some, out, some people out there that will take from you until there is nothing left but a shell. They will take your time, they will take your attention, they will take your finances, they will take everything from you until nothing is left. You have to have wisdom from God to know the difference between that. Okay? And, and uh, I, I say that there is a balance there. Okay? Because there are some, there are some ministers that will take advantage of you and, and squeeze you out like a tube of toothpaste till there's nothing left but the bottle that it came in. There are some men that will treat women that way. There are some women that will treat men that way. Yes, it's out there. And you, you I say this, there's a difference between, uh, and, and a balance there to be struck, okay? So I say proceed carefully and proceed with wisdom, not in, in um, complete innocence and ignorance. Because you say, why? I've tried that and you know what's happened? You paint a big target on your back and on your forehead for people to use you and abuse you. And you have to say, you have to say no when to say enough is enough. Amen? And uh, there's a balance there is what I'm saying. Just be careful, okay? Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. Man, where does the time go? It just goes so fast. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13 and verse 14, But put ye on... The Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill it, to fulfill the lust thereof. And so you say, what do you need to do? You need, you say, what did Epaphroditus do? He has put on, and he did put on, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He had the mind of Christ and he put on. The Bible says there in Philippians 2 5, let this mind be in you. Uh, it's almost like this. Um, it's almost like the Lord Jesus Christ is standing there uh, with, a, with, a, with your coat as you leave the restaurant, if you will. And He's handing you 
um, this coat saying, put, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can say, nope, I'm going to go on my own. And you refuse, that, uh, you refuse to put on that coat. You refuse to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you go out into the cold. You go out into the world um, in, unprotected, if you will. And you go your own way. And the Lord says, let this mind be in you and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's something that you have to do on a daily basis. Uh, because if you handle things in your own strength and your own power with your own wisdom, my, what a mess you can make. And what, uh, what a, a thief of joy uh, can, can, be, uh, can happen. It, your joy can be stolen in a moment uh, if you handle things your way instead of putting on the Lord Jesus Christ and letting His mind be in you. Look back at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Bear with me. I may go a few minutes over. We're not quite to time yet, but um, I want to get a few more minutes in here because I feel like I just got going. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 27. The Bible says, For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard he had been sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So to take note here, both Timothy and Paul got sick on occasion. Right? And Epaphroditus was their companion and fellow servant, and he got sick. Right? You say, why is that important? Look over at 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 23. Just to your right, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. I hope you came tonight with a mind to study. <laughs> And uh, you're not going to learn anything just by the preacher rattling things off. You've got to turn those pages in that book. You've got you to see it for yourself. The Bible says, They searched the Scriptures daily whether those things were so. See, if I'm telling you the truth, make sure you search the Scriptures along with me and read it for yourself. Amen? Don't take my word for it. Take Why? We've got God's Word on it. Amen? And let God be true and every man a liar. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 23. The Bible says, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 23. Here's some medical advice. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Now why would Paul be given medical advice if he still had the gift of healing? You say, Why? Because the Apostle Paul's apostolic gift had faded away until it was finished. And now we'll, we'll look at some scripture here. But the main thing that you need to understand and know is the Bible says the Jews require a sign. His ministry switched from primarily and in, in dealing with a lot of Jews until Gentiles. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. But the Jews, um, the Bible says, require a sign. And so turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It's important to note but it will, because it will come up as you try to defend the Word of God and as you read and study you have to understand this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And it will come up. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. You say, what did, what did the Apostle Paul have here? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll, we'll get down to verse number 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a what? A thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my what? Infirm. Where do you go if you go to the infirmary? You're sick. And you've gone to the hospital. You've gone to the infirmary ward. That means that you need some healing. I will glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And so, Timothy, sick. Paul, sick. Epaphroditus, sick. 
So this text shows you that the apostolic gifts that the Apostle Paul once had have faded away. The Apostle Paul once had them. Look at Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. You're going to run into some silly charismatic or Pentecostal somewhere and um, they're going to try to lay hands on you. I've told them before, they've tried to reach for me. I said, the Bible says lay hands suddenly on no man. <laughs> Amen. You keep your hands off of me. I don't want no devil off of you. Acts chapter 14 and verse 9. The Bible says, The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Amen. The Apostle Paul once had that gift. Look at Acts chapter 28 and verse 1. Acts chapter 28 and verse 1. You say, what did he have? He had the apostolic gifts. He had the apostolic gifts that uh, Jesus Christ mentioned about taking up serpents, healing the sick. Yeah. And um, in and, and doing that, he had those apostolic gifts. Look at Acts chapter 28 and verse 1. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita, modern day Malta, Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a what? A viper. That's your serpent. A viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer. Whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. You know what the apostle Paul did? And he shook the beast, and he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. You want to try it? We can go down to Sydney Zoo. They got a few uh, two steppers. See what's a two stepper? You take two steps and you collapse. And that's the end of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Australia's got the, the most poisonous land-dwelling snakes that there are. There's more poisonous that are in water, but Australia holds the world champion for the world record for the most. And so you, you, you think you got those apostolic gifts? Let, let me take you down to Sydney, Sydney Zoo. We'll see about that. We'll let you get in there on when, it's, when they're real good and hot. And uh, you know what these fakers do? That handle, they're snake-handling churches, by the way. And you say, what do they do? They put them in the fridge. Snakes are warm-blooded. They got to get in the sun. They got to get warmed up. So they get them out of the fridge and, they, and they, they dance around with them and hand them off to one another and say, see, we're spiritual. We've got the apostolic gifts. No, you don't. Let that rattlesnake, let that viper lay in the sun on a rock for a while then pick him up. Yeah. See what happens. I've witnessed to uh, Pentecostals and Charismatics that said they've got those gifts and, and they don't know how to rightly divide. It's sad, but they're so bent on it um, that they say you can drink any deadly thing and it will not hurt thee. I said, there's some bleach under the sink. Won't you go grab some, honey? I had one foolish one that said she's going to take me up on it. I wouldn't let her. I'll drink it. Yeah, that's how dumb some of them are. And, um, but the Apostle Paul, he took that beast and he shook him off into the fire and felt no harm. And um, the Bible says, How be it they looked, verse 6, when he should have swollen or fallen down suddenly, down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. That's the second time he got accused of being a god. The first time we read over there in Acts 14, they said there's uh, Mercurius and Jupiter's come down to us in the likeness of men. And Mercury and Jupiter and their gods, and we've, they fell down to worship them. Same here. The barbarian said, this man's a god. We need to worship him. And um, verse 7, in the same quarters were possessions of the chief, men, uh, chief man of the island. So like the king there or the, the chief, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in, wasn't afraid of getting sick with him, 
entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Amen? He had the gift. Now, when it comes to the time to close his ministry, you say, where was that? That's at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Turn over there. This is the close of Paul's ministry. Say, why? He's getting it in the neck. <laughs> Literally. They're about to chop his head off. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. And um, just to show you where you're at. Uh, verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished, finished, finished my course. I have kept the faith. And so he's getting ready. He's making his um, final statements before God calls him home. And this shows you the timing of his, of his um, ministry. But look down at verse 20. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum. What? Sick. One of his travel companions, he left him there sick. Just like Epaphroditus, just like Timothy, giving him medical advice. And so, you say, what happened? The gift had faded away. That's very clear to see when you have the Scriptures and you study the Word of God. Amen? And so, it looks like we come to a close right there, and we'll, we'll come back um, and finish up Philippians 2 next time. And by the way, when he, he said, um, take a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities, that's not talking about fermented wine. There's a difference in the Bible. The word wine is generic. There's fermented wine, which is a strong drink and alcoholic, and there's non-fermented wine. And both of them are considered. Otherwise, your Savior was a sinner. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, it says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. Jesus Christ turned the water into wine, and it was not alcoholic, and he didn't get those people drunk. And um, we'll have a study on that sometime because that's a, that's a long study. It'd take a couple of nights to get through it. But it'd be an exciting study to look at. And so um, don't get sucked in uh, to that. The Bible says, Wine is a mocker, a strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Amen.